um, interviews on the website also as podcasts. So you can actually go and listen to it afterwards. Okay, great. Yes. So today we're speaking with about Francina, who is Francine, Alangi. Francine. Oh, Francine. Hey, 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 hey. Imagine getting the name wrong, first of all. <laughs> uh, we're talking Francine to... With, Chirambo. Yes, we're Francine Chirambo, Alangizi, with a Christian twist, should we say that? <laughs> so, uh, Francine, who is Wa Francine? First of all. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Uh, since Angela says Tina, I'm excited. And um, Yay. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to talk about what I do. Yes. And I'll start by just talking about my professional career before I get into um, my, my love for marriage counseling. Okay. So I'm the managing director of D and G Consulting, and this company specializes in new venture creation, training, and development. Basically, I'm working with entrepreneurs all around. Okay. Um, I hold a master of management degree in entrepreneurship and new venture creation from Bits Business School. Cheapers. And I have okay. also studied. I I studied at UNISA, I, where I did my bachelor of commerce degree in management, and also I did my financial financial management there. And then, um, because I work with um, entrepreneurs, I'm accredited by the United Nations in their supplier development program. So I'm an accredited supplier development consultant. Wow. I'm also a certified business advisor. So because I'm, I'm working in the business industry, you know, in the entrepreneurship business industry, which is uh, quite competitive. So you need to have your qualifications right and you mm. need to know what you are doing. So, and because I'm running my own consultancy company, you know, when you're a consultant, you mm. need to have that upfront. So, on my professional side, that is what I do when I'm not coaching. So, in addition to these qualifications, I'm a certified life coach, and I'm also a certified relationship mm. workshop facilitator. Jeez, okay. I'm feeling very unqualified right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Underqualified <laughs> is the word, right? <laughs> so I'm the founder of Marriage Pillar. Um, Marriage Pillar is a group that um, has been formed to help young couples build their homes and understand marriage. Okay. This group is also aim aimed at um, older couples who need to learn new ideas and enhance their relationship. So a lot of times when we look at ma marriage counseling, we're just looking at people that are starting at home. Mm. And we leave them to work on their own. But yes. I feel um, we shouldn't just marry them off. We should be there to supply that information constantly. You know, we should have um, a place where they can easily come back and feel comfortable to to talk to somebody and ask, you know, what should I do here? What should I do there? Yes. But also for the older couples, yes. it is it's, it's not um, that you get married and then you just are on autopilot. <laughs> I discourage that. I always yeah. encourage people that are older to get into um, enhancement programs, you know, programs that will help them to keep their relationship on fire. So this is why Marriage Pillar was formed. Um, I don't just uh, uh, work with couples that are young or that are getting into marriage, but I'm also working with couples that are already in the game and, you know, uh, throwing new ideas at them and, you know, cheering them. Up and you know, um, just standing by and saying you can do it, you can do it. Or if you have a problem, can we solve it? Can we pray about it? So basically, this is what I'm doing at Marriage Pillar. And um, so this is a group that meets every month, um, just once a month. And um, it's, it's a wonderful place to be. It's a wonderful place to be. It's, it's just a wonderful platform. So Marriage Pillar is based on uh, Titus chapter 2. Mm. Um, I'll just open my Bible and read this to you so that you can understand. It's Titus chapter 2, just verse 1 to 6. Yes, please. So I'll read uh -huh. from the message, uh, the message version, which says, Your job is to speak out on the things that make for solid doctrine. Mm -hmm. Guide other men into lives of temperance, dignity, and wisdom, into a healthy faith, love, and endurance. Guide other women into lives of reverence so they end up as neither gossips nor drunks but models of goodness by looking at them the younger women who know how to love their husbands and children be virtuous and pure keep a good house be good wives 
we don't want anyone looking down on God's message because of their behavior. Mm -hmm. And also, guide the young men to live disciplined lives. So basically, this is what Marriage Pillar does, you know. Okay. Uh, it's also involving the men. It's not just involving the women because a home is not just about the woman. It is about men as well. So coaching and mentoring um, couples is really close to my heart. And I have been doing this for over 10 years now. Jeez, that's a long so, time. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I, I just love. You know, I can do it straight from my sleep. I, I just love to do that because um, I truly believe, you know, um, for any company to run okay, mm. the whole home where people are coming from must be doing well. For a country to stand and to be in good standing, you know, there are people's homes yes. must be fine. Yes, yes. People must be coming from a good uh, home. Yes. So, um, yeah. Besides, besides the marriage pillar platform, I'm also the founder of prayer ministries. So okay. Ministries before we be before we go to that one, I just quickly, um, before I forget this train of thought, um, I th- I I'm find it very interesting that you are actually focusing also on the married people and bringing that up. I remember a couple of years ago, I was looking for something similar to what you're doing. And it was difficult to find anything. I eventually found a, 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 a what's this, especially with a, a Christian, a, what's this, marriage counseling for married people already. Yeah. I eventually saw, found someone, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called the marriage course. Uh, something Sue and, oh, I can't remember their names now. But they were actually, they're actually not even from here. They are from England. So it's, it's, uh-huh. it's interesting that there, there's actually someone, something here because i swear to god i struggled to find anything <laughs> i am <I'm>, yeah <laughs> i am so happy that we have i will definitely 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 promote you <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah it is i told you angela <laughs> i know right <laughs> okay yes sorry i call, I, I yeah. disrupted your speaking angela is now excited i'm very Thank excited you so but you see angela Angela, something that I forgot to ask is I'm not just also focusing on people that are married, but I'm also talking to people that are not yet married because there's mm. a generation that is coming that is not so interested in marriage because of what they have seen. Yeah. So whatever perception they have, you know, is not good about yes. marriage. So I do have workshops for them as well um, where I sit with them and, you know, allow them to ask as many questions as they can because they also need guidance. And um, mm-hmm. there are people that are not sure whether they should step into marriage or not. Mm-hmm. So I am there to guide that generation as well. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> So I think that also kind of covers your teaching, uh, your a bit about your teaching style. Um, yeah. yeah. So you bring in the, the the Bible aspects and the traditional aspects. You know the traditional Alangizi, Apunzisa, uh, and all that. Do you do that as well, or you just focus on that on the on the biblical Christian side of it? No, I I also incorporate the cultural setting of it. I really appreciate culture. Okay. So uh, what what I do because I'm a child of God, I love God so much, and um, Amen. <laughs> I want to teach people. That is why we have that state of prayer ministry. But then I draw my teaching from uh, the principles that I find in the Bible. Okay. And then I also use the cultural setting because, you know, I am Bemba and Bembas, we are so serious with, with teaching. <laughs> yes. So, we, yeah. <laughs> Bembas, you won't go wrong. So, coming from a background where I was, uh, I was groomed before I got married and I went through, my husband and I have been through all the stages that are there in the marriage, you know, the, the rights mm. of marriage. So, uh, so from, from Chilanga Muliro, you know, right through to Uku Indisha, we have done that. So I, I really find it um, so rich. It is very rich for me to say I can't uh, draw any uh, teaching from there would be very wrong of me because it's, it's, it's very valuable. I have, I have looked at it and I find it to be very valuable. But mm-hmm. what I can tell you is that um, my teaching style, yes, I'm using the biblical marriage model, which really works. But then um, when I when I get into the cultural teaching, there are certain things, of course, that do not suit me as a child of God. And then there are also certain things that I feel are not for today. So I, I 
I draw from the cultural setting, mm. one of the things that I feel can be used today and are very valuable. And then I also incorporate that with the word of God, because actually what I have been taught, what I was taught during my preparation, it's exactly what is in the Bible. I've managed to find those scriptures in the Bible that speak to the grooming that I was given. Okay. It, it kind of answers my next question to say, how do you incorporate the modern? Because, uh, uh, yo, uh, there's, a, there's a lot that has changed. Yes. Mm. There's a lot that has changed, but we still have tradition, basically. We still have to abide by our traditions. And um, it's interesting that you incorporate that. And I actually found something interesting you just said just now that um, there's stuff that you don't teach because you don't find it it agrees with uh, your biblical principles, basically. Principles. Yes. Mm. Okay. You see, you see um, a lot of times I'll talk about uh, as Christians, a lot of times we will say, um, if we... Remember, we say if you have saying she, but I I don't know in Yanja how you would say that. How would you say that in Yanja? Ah, no, we yeah. say this is demonic. <laughs> oh yes, demonic. yes, and okay. That is that is us Christians. So we run away from the cultural teaching. We shun it completely. Yes, but um, unfortunately, uh, when we do that, we miss out on a lot. Just mm. because we is angoma. Then we, we run away and say, E I E V. But there are also people who are not demon possessed who can drum for you and you can teach. But Amen. Also, when we talk about the tradition of teaching, it's not necessarily that we need the Ngoma to be there. Mm. The Ngoma is just there at the beach to help you, you know, maybe to make to keep the situation live. Yeah. So, you know, when I'm teaching, I can just teach you. Do. I don't need to get drunk like other people get drunk. <laughs> I will just teach and I will tell you everything else, you know, what needs to be there. We need to understand that marriage is dynamic. Yeah. So, one thing I would like to highlight is that the word of God doesn't change. What has been written about marriage stands. On mm -hmm. the other hand, I appreciate the tradition. You know, like I mentioned earlier, that I have gone through all the stages that are there, you know, in my culture. And I understand and I appreciate that. For instance, my culture teaches that a husband is the head of the house. Mm -hmm. Biblically, a husband is a head as well. However, there are certain practices which are not godly that I feel should not be practiced today. Yeah. You know? So I don't include them in my teaching. But because I went through an uncensored teaching, I'm able to tell you today that this one, uh -uh, this is not godly. I'm not going to do it. Even though if I'm teaching somebody, I can actually tell them that, okay, a long time ago, they did ABC and they did it because of this. But mm. today, we don't need this, okay? Today, the Bible teaches us that this thing and this thing is not right. So we shall not do it, but just for somebody to have that understanding. The that context. That. Yes, the context. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a so, preacher, I, I, uh, there's a pastor that I love, 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 who actually taught me how to read the Bible properly. He says, don't get one verse from the bible and you read it you must read the context what was the context around that uh what was happening for this verse to for, for this verse to be included in the bible and i like the fact that you've highlighted that you give context to say no Akare, it was like this and this was why but you don't necessarily have to take it in now okay hi no i'm getting so yeah. much wisdom that, today <laughs> that, that angle is very important. yes you just say this was done because of A, B, C, D at that time. It was relevant at that time. Mm -hmm. But now what is relevant is A, B, C. Exactly. Mm, exactly. And when it comes to a modern marriage, we need to strike a balance. Okay? So there's that tradition of traditional marriage. You have to go on the bones. There's an intambi, intambi, intambi. They want it. And then there's a modern marriage where... Uh, you are feeling, ah, oh, you know what, we don't need any of this. And then, okay, you are a Christian family and you're feeling, no, we don't need any of this. But no, really, what we should be doing is um, understanding the times, okay? Yes. Understand the people of that time. Mm -hmm. And then understand today, that is what is going to help us. So when you are a child of God, you read like you have been told, you read and then you say, okay, this is how it should be. And when we look at the book of Esther, for instance, Esther is in the Bible. Mm. Esther was, you know, in that time, in their setting, basically, you know, for one year before they yeah. got married. Mm. Okay. So when we look at our culture setting, so that they could teach them, because you can't teach somebody in one day. You yeah. know, you can't just teach somebody who's been, you know, who's 35 years old, so that they can understand. No. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's a 
gradual teaching, you introduce them slowly and you are training them. So Esther, is one of them. And she said they were teaching her different things, you know. Mm-hmm. There were people that were there that knew and understood the secrets from the chambers of the king. So those people were able to... So you have a marriage counselor like myself who is already in marriage. It means I understand marriage. I have been there. So it means if you are so lean, you have no idea what it is. At yeah. least I can teach you, you know. So... So there are certain there are certain teachings that are not relevant to today's setting. For instance, I would say, of course, I'm speaking high level. I'm not going to get into details, but there, yeah. um, a teaching like um, where they would say kudala, you know, when a wife needed to communicate to the to the husband by using certain ornaments. Mm. Why would you do that today? Why would you teach a child to do that today? Yes. I teach yeah. a lot on communication when I have workshops because you know communication is vital in any relationship. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if I'm teaching a child to use ornaments as a way of communicating, uh, I'm not teaching rights. Things have changed today. Children must be able to verbalize, must mm-hmm. be able to say what they need exactly. to say and what they mean to say. So I feel um, that one, I can, I, I do tell them this is how they communicated that time during this period. Yes. But today, my dear, what you need to do, you can speak, you know, you are friends. Mm-hmm. You need to introduce a relationship to children that, um, you know, they understand. They need to know that they have to be friends. Husband and wife need to be friends. They are companions. They should be a friend of each other. So they, if there's anything that is confronting them, they need to speak. So... So that is what I, I always say. And we can't live in ancient times, right? Mm-hmm. Just because yeah. my mother used a baula to hit man's your samba, <laughs> you know, in that <laughs> <thing> today, <laughs> I should do the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so telling you. Things we can teach, you know. So for me, what I always do is I will, I will give them the setting of that time. Actually, the people that I teach really find it interesting to sit with me because... I, I don't want that setting where they are feeling intimidated. Mm. I want them to be excited about marriage. So when they come, I want them to know that, oh, this person is going to teach me. I can look forward to tomorrow. I'm not going to, to lie to them that it's going to be easy, but at least I can excite them so that they understand that, you know what, I'm moving from this place to this place, and this is going to be my home. I'm starting up. She's simply helping me. She's not here to punish me. Mm-hmm. So that is where we need to be when we talk about a modern kind of teaching. A modern kind of setting uh, has been misunderstood. Yes. So when people talk about a modern teaching or a modern marriage, they are thinking um, we forget everything else that is supposed to be taught mm-hmm. about marriage. Then people just get married. Short, I call it shotgun approach. You know. <laughs> I can understand why people find it interesting sitting with you. I'm mesmerized. I could talk to you the whole day. <laughs> Yes, 
for real. We are really passionate about it. And it's, it's very nice that we have uh, we, we, we have dug you up and we are going to show the Zambians that we actually do have people exactly. like you, Francine. Yes. You know? Others mm-hmm. might not be able to have had opportunities to meet you. Yes. But it's important that we highlight to say we do have people like this mm-hmm. in our community. Yes. Mm-hmm. Don't suffer in silence. Yeah. Olo Chupo, like you've said, go yes. for the, the refreshers or whatever you want to call them. Go you there's help even after it's not just Twami yes. Kerela when you get married, now you must figure it out. Uh, hey. Oh, I'm wondering. We need to. We are. I'm, I'm. very, very happy. In line with Women's Month, this was the perfect, <laughs> perfect thing to, to do. Perfect interview. Perfect huh? person. Yes. So I don't even have any more. Me, I can just listen to you the whole day. I don't know if I've seen us. Yeah. No, it's a problem. Not a problem. Yeah. Uh, I Yes, please. For selling women, being women's man. Okay, so um, um, remember yesterday I had asked you what you might want to know or anything else. One of the things yeah. that maybe I can speak um, uh, about concerning my fellow Nachim Gustas. Yeah. <laughs> okay, those that are teaching is that uh, the syllabus that is being used by most of them is outdated. Okay. It needs to be revised. Okay, I appreciate the fact that we need to preserve our culture, but some of the teachings must now be moved to the archives. But when we say we are moving to the archives, you know, when there's an archive center, we are not deleting, mm-hmm. we are not throwing away. We can still refer to them, but the issue here is how can we make it better for the generation that is coming now? Yes. Okay. So, so what used to work for 1922 cannot work for 2020. Okay, yeah, yeah. but there is a framework that we work around, and I'm not saying we do have the framework. We keep the framework, like I said, even in never November, and I truly appreciate everything else that I have been told. So the framework stays, but try try to update certain um, teachings that you are. It's just like at school, you can't use the same edition. You mm-hmm. are studying economics. You are not going to be given the same edition from 1990 until yes. today. So each year. Yes. 
It's absolutely okay, important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So surrendering yourself or your child to just anyone who costs you in future. Yes. The teaching is important, yes, but for me there are spiritual implications. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do your investigation before you settle for somebody. It's not just about the good that you know, you know, you know. <laughs> yes. So God is spiritual well being and sound doctrine. Yeah really matters for me. It so does. this is what I would advise the people I say. Yes. Mm -hmm. So That's it's not about mm -hmm. uh -uh. find out what are they about? How mm -hmm. is their marriage? Yeah, another thing, how is their marriage? What are they going to to impart on me? Mm -hmm. So you will find that there are a lot of people they have failed to maintain their own marriage. But mm -hmm. they want to teach you. Now yeah. what does it tell you? Yeah. What does it tell you? So, you know, the book of Titus tells me that I should be an example. If you read further from the same, I should be an example. Mm -hmm. So if I should be an example, then it means the things that I'm teaching, I should leave them myself. Yes. So it's, it's not about now, um, just because you've got the theory and because you are you are old, now you are thinking I can teach. Not everybody is called to teach. Yeah. You know? uh, like I have learned age doesn't make us wise. Mm. makes us old. That, so, is, a, exactly. that is a gem that right there. <laughs> exactly. For some people, the wisdom is not there. So that is why I say, do your investigation. Uh -huh. Find out, do these people have the same belief? I'm, sometimes, I'm surprised when I see people that feel they are Christians. Then they go and call somebody who has no Christian, who has no light in them to teach their child. What are they teaching their children? Mm. So when these children come back and tell you what they have been taught, there are some children who have been brought back to me. You know, like uh, Francine, Peter will come on, you know, just, just go through this because my child is complaining. So then you ask the child, what, what were you taught? My goodness me, mm. you know what? Some of these things, you should do your homework before you take your children to do these things. Yes. So, so that is my advice. But then um, I want to encourage people, you need to be counseled before you get married. Don't uh, go, don't, don't get married without having some counseling. It's very important because you've never been there. Even if you've been there, actually, the people who have been there, they also need to go through counseling. They need to mm -hmm. understand why their marriage broke to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So why did you fail? Exactly. Come back and go through the teaching. Find out uh, you know where you went wrong so that you don't make the same mistakes that you made wherever you are. So if it's a second marriage, it's a third marriage, you, you just need to go over it all the time. Yeah. And for the people that are getting married, you know, for the first time, but the person they are getting married to has been married before. Mm -hmm. That person who has been married before must not be selfish. They, they must do the counseling together again because for this other person it's new. You, yeah. you are there with your own failures. Now you are going to drag them into own the new relationship. Mm. So as long as you decide to get to remarry, yeah. you have to you have to do it afresh. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to seek counseling. Seek counseling before you get married. For me, I would say it is very important. Don't um, don't ignore it and don't say it is rubbish. It is not rubbish. It is there's so much wisdom in there. When you yes. look back, you say, "Oh my goodness!" And you know what? You don't have to fail. You don't have to go through the same mistakes other people have made. Rather, listen to the wise counsel so that you you can bypass those mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yours will be, you will learn quicker. You will learn faster. Sure. Hi, Bob. Thank you very much. Like, I, I could listen to you the whole day, me, like I said, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, Latina. Yeah, 
Ah, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> you know, when I actually do this, this interviews and then when I'm typing them out, I actually find myself laughing all over again. I can see myself having a very nice time typing this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. We'll let you go now. That was a nice few minutes of wisdom. Ooh, I've learned so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank very you so much. Uh, the pictures you are go you've sent already, or you are going to send still? Yes. Okay. No, she's already sent. Already okay. Sent. All right. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Francine. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.